Okay, next up, Dante Benningfield, a local writer who's worked. Oh. Absolutely. Oh. Dante, and Dante is not up next. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're with me. <laughs> He's still a local writer. Uh, next up is Max. Max Spang is a professional video producer at the Next Way, sorry Dante, an avid home brewer and an amateur connoisseur of fine craft beers. Max is a frequent beer blogger and produces video and text reviews of beers, bars, and bottle shops on his website, snobbybeer.com. Max. Hi, I'm Dante. <laughs> Uh, my name is Max Fang, and I, I am a 23-year-old who is super into beer, which is really shocking, I know. Um, but what the hell is beer? <laughs> please, please hold all laughing until the end. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but what the hell is beer? Well, according to the Reinheitsgebot, or German purity law, beer is a combination of water, barley, hops, and yeast. Outside of the German purity law, <laughs> you can use things such as uh, wheat, rye, corn, rice, etc. However, in a less tangible way, uh, beer is a lot of different things to a lot of different people, myself included. For example, to the pilgrims, um, beer was very important. So important, in fact, that when they were running low on beer, they decided to stop at Plymouth Rock to brew more. The rest is history. Um, it's comforting to know that our ancestors had their priorities straight, and it's very, uh, it brings a sense of pride to people like me. To George Washington. It was a way to drink water without getting sick. Uh, water in America at the time was very bad, and it frankly could kill you. Uh, so the yeast will convert these sugars in beer to alcohol, which preserves the beer. And it's kind of funny to think about drinking beer to not get sick. To some Belgian monks, uh, beer is vitally important because they will brew these traditional styles, they will sell the bottles, and they will use the funds to support their abbey. However, they will also drink nothing but beer during Lent, which we are in right now, uh, for 40 days straight. Uh, fasting, yeah. Pretty, pretty intense. To Germans, beer is pretty much considered a meal, or at least, you know, a necessary accompaniment to a meal. In Bavaria, the typical serving glass is a whopping one liter. They even have an alcohol-free beer marketed towards children called Kinder Beer. <laughs> To fraternities, beer's an excuse to vomit on each other without anybody really getting all that mad. They may also have a similar diet as the, uh, as the Belgians do, which is nothing but beer for about 40 days, but it's not by choice. They might throw in a slice of pizza or something here and there. To home brewers, I'm a little ahead of myself. To home brewers, <laughs> beer is a creative outlet. It's like a person who is very passionate about cooking they come up with uh, recipes and hone their skills and do all kinds of fun things. Uh, using a turkey fryer and a few glass carboys, you can make delicious beer five or ten gallons at a time. However, home brewing is also kind of a pain in the butt. It's a headache, it's an emotional strain, and occasionally it's a huge mess. For example, on the left here, that's a fermentation that's spilled all over the place, and it's still fermenting right now, but the one on the right is a bottle disaster that I had, and many bottles were sacrificed on that day, unfortunately. <laughs> Two Dayton brewer, brewers coming up, uh, such as Toxic Brewing Company, Vitruvian Brewing Company, and the Dayton Beer Company. Beer is a entrepreneurial investment. It is a risk-taking adventure, and frankly, I for one support their adventure. Two beer bloggers, or in my case, vloggers, uh, beer is an excuse to try new beers while adding new content to your website. This photo was taken in Columbus at the Better Beer Authority, and they, like me, like to film themselves talking and drinking beer. <laughs> to hipsters, here is a nice can of PBR, with, uh, with maybe with a hand-rolled cigarette while they drink, or while they read, leather-bound books and listen to that rare B-side live vinyl from that band that you've never heard of. <laughs> to the people of more adventurous breweries, uh, beer could be, a, it could be a beer brewed with grapes infected with fungus, or an ale made with bacon and 
received the ingredients of maple donuts, or perhaps a beer that is brewed with oregano, garlic, and parsley, or even a 55% alcohol by volume beer that is served in squirrels from taxidermists. <laughs> Speaking of donuts, to Homer Simpson, beer is the cause of and solution to all of life's problems. <laughs> Homer's had a long history with the golden stuff, the fictional brand Duff being his beer of choice, and who doesn't love Homer Simpson? <laughs> to, <laughs> to beer geeks, beer is something that goes above the light lagers and macro brews of the world, and I did, I must confess, I had a Miller Lite earlier. Uh, it's also a way to meet new people, try new things, and perhaps spend a little bit too much money. Uh, this is Michael Jackson, by the way. Not THE Michael Jackson, but a, another guy named Michael Jackson who is uh, big in the beer world. To beer snobs, beer is an excuse to feel better than everybody and look down on those who drink the cheap Miller Lights of the world. Um, which brings me to what I do, which is snobby beer. Why would I want to call myself snobby beer when these guys are, frankly, douchebags? <laughs> the goal of snobby beer. Um, it was sort of a tongue-in-cheek nod to, A, these douchebags, and B, you know, the casual beer drinker. It's sort of poking fun of the snobby people while still embracing it at the same time, uh, which sounds like I'm floating way up here and it's just beer, but... <laughs> to me, beer is an expensive hobby. For example, these beers cost me $30 a pop. <laughs> um, but in this hobby, in this expensive hobby, I've managed to meet awesome people, try really amazing and rare beers, and um, learn the process of creating good craft beer at home. Uh, it's also a way to end my day or enjoy, you know, a beer after mowing the lawn like many other people do. However, my beer of choice might be a Russian Imperial Stout brewed with <laughs> vanilla and cocoa nibs and aged in bourbon barrels. <laughs> And finally, uh, peanuts. Peanuts go great with beer, as we all know. But the real reason I have this on here is we're filming this, and it's going on YouTube. And I would really appreciate it if uh, my last slide, everybody just went nuts. <laughs> <laughs>